Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and today I am going to be doing a review of Deadwood by Pete Dexter. When you think of like classic westerns, Deadwood is one of the first books, stories that comes to my mind. It is based on real life characters that most of us probably know of. I'm not really sure how accurate this book is, but it is a wonderful kind of rendition of the Wild West at its kind of peak. It's a really wonderful insight into how society was formed of these really interesting, often very morally grey and corrupt individuals. Deadwood is kind of considered to want to be the kind of greatest westerns of all time, and I can see why now that I've read it. So there is a series of Deadwood, I think it's three seasons, I think it was done by HBO. I watched the first two seasons many years ago and I loved it, I never finished it, I don't know why, I think I, I was probably at university studying, but I loved it at the time. And now that I've finished reading the book, I want to rewatch it because I think I would be able to get more from it. But without further ado, let's jump into my review of the book. This book is very character centric. There is not a lot of plot, if any plot at all. We are following a lot of different characters. It's a very kind of wide cast of individuals that we see from kind of other people's POVs. So there isn't really a plot. Like there is, you know, we, there are two kind of main characters who go to the town of Deadwood and then it's really just about them interacting with other people around them and coming to terms with what they've done in previous years and you know how they've kind of got to where they are so be aware of that there's no plot there is no story there's nothing that's kind of really happening it's just about these characters as they live their life as they come to terms with the things that they've done and I love that as a very character driven reader some of my favorite stuff to read I think you probably have to be in a very specific mood because it's quite slow. I personally think it works for this type of book because we are really here to learn about these characters more than anything else. So in terms of characters, we follow a fairly wide range of characters. We see the majority of the story through one main perspective, and that is through the perspective of Charlie Utter. Charlie Utter was a real person, and he was the right hand of Wild Bill Hickok, who was also a real person. He was a bit of a legend of the time. He had a bit of a reputation and he was very well respected. A lot of people were really scared of him just because of all of the stuff that he had done. We don't get Bill's direct perspective, but we do see him through the perspective of Charlie and other characters as well. And these are like more secondary characters. I'm not going to go through them because there's quite a few. But my favourite characters to follow were Charlie. I loved Charlie's perspective. He's very intelligent, quite wise, very observant. That's the thing I love about Charlie and Bill is that Bill Hickok is, you know, he kind of goes in gung-ho and his reputation will precede him wherever he goes just because of all of the stuff that he had achieved up until that point. But Charlie's the kind of more quiet one. He's the more observant one. He's the, he's the one there watching everything, really understanding the dynamics at play with the different people in the room. And I love that contrast between Bill Hickok and with Charlie because... They're so different and that's kind of why it works. They balance each other out. The other character that I loved following, loved, loved following, and I wish we just had more time with her was Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane, I don't know if anybody's watched the movie, but the movie Calamity Jane that I think was done in like the 60s or the 70s, that version of Calamity Jane is nothing like this version of, of Calamity Jane. This version of Calamity Jane is the real true version of Calamity Jane. She was very rough, a very unrefined, but she's also got a very kind heart. She can hold her own, she can command a room and people will get out of her way if she's walking down the street. And I kind of love that about her. But a lot of the kind of slightly more modern takes on Calamity Jane show her as this kind of very rough, very unrefined woman, but then she turns into a lady and it's like, no, she never turned into a lady. She was always rough and ready and that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, at least in this world. I love just kind of seeing her interact with people, especially men, because I think a lot of people feared her. She wasn't very attractive as well. So people just straight up feared her because of what she was capable of. And I just, I think that is pretty cool, especially given that that was a time that women often were prostitutes and that was pretty much it. <laughs> or they were, you know, married and that was pretty much it. You know, you have this outlier of Calamity Jane basically doing whatever she wanted, whenever she wanted, and 
she did it as well in in a, in a pretty kind of balanced way i would say but she's also a bit crazy so there's that and then the last character that i really enjoyed was al swearingen so al swearingen was a, a businessman he owned his own kind of prostitute business and he's a total sleazebag but he's super super smart super savvy you know he's your kind of typical sleazy man trying to take advantage of everything and everyone and sometimes it backfires but more often than not it makes him very wealthy and i love those types of characters i personally hate them but i kind of root for them in a really odd way because they're often the underdog and you could just imagine that they were probably bullied when they were younger so i'm all for the bullied becoming the powerful one <laughs> in terms of like the setting it's super depressing i mean it's the wild west there's very little hope we're coming off the back of a time where prospecting was very much the kind of in thing you know hunting for gold trying to get quick riches rather than you know trying to build businesses and building wealth slowly but surely it was much more about the quick buck he captures the wild west in a really gritty way and it makes you not ever want to be in that sort of Era. like i don't know about you guys i always think about periods of history that i would love to go back in time to see the wild west is not is not one of them we also get a reasonable amount of insight into the comanches who were a north american tribe and they predominant they were predominantly based in the southern great plains from what i understand there are some really i don't even know how to describe it but there's like some really raw bits about you know these folks talking about the comanches because they were obviously perceived as the enemy and the people that they had to kill but then there's also this like it's really interesting because this is also during the time where slavery was still a thing and so there is some mention about the treatment of black people and slaves in the society and there's obviously this kind of divide in america about the status of slaves and whether that should have continued or whether it should have been abolished so it's very i don't know it touches on like political and historical events but in a very surface level way and i think it works i think going too much into it would have maybe detracted from the character centric nature of this book but i really like the fact that we kind of skirted it because it kind of made me interested in it and i started reading a bit about the comanches as a result i like the way he handled it and i like the fact that the characters were very aware of it rather than just you know kind of blurring over this period of history that is incredibly important and that at least in the uk we learn absolutely nothing about so i really like that but it's not going to be for everybody also it's very gruesome so you know we hear about how the comanches were killed by the rednecks in america and it's it's not it's not nice like you get some pretty detailed descriptions about how they would skin the backs of their heads like it's it's not for the faint of heart honestly even as like a grim dark vet now i got a little bit uncomfortable i'm glad i read it but it can make you feel very uncomfortable and i just want to make sure that you have that warning ahead of time in terms of themes there's a lot of really interesting themes covered in this book i think one of the main ones is this kind of idea of like societal progress we had the gold rush at the time but really how many people actually profited off the gold rush is probably quite limited in hindsight this kind of idea of constantly chasing after money you know america is the definition of capitalism commercialism about materialism about industry thriving industry and i think that's really well captured in this story but like in a really subtle way because i think it contrasts really nicely with the fact that deadwood is essentially this like total wasteland where not much is really happening and people kind of go there to die but then you know we have this backdrop of the gold rush and the excitement of, of of that and the prospects that it could bring but i think in reality we know now that was the gold rush really that good at least in that period of time I, I don't think it was i mean i'm not that educated on that topic but at least based on my limited understanding it was not that important in pushing forward the american economy at least i could be wrong though but this whole idea of you know kind of progress for the sake of progress i find really interesting and i think he captures it really well the other kind of really big theme i think he talks about is this kind of idea of legacy you know we're following wild bill hickok he's this legend kind of coming up towards the end of his time that's not a spoiler it's very obvious if you read the back of the book that that's what this is about 
and he is thinking about his actions and how he has treated the people in his life. One of the people that he mentions quite a lot is his wife, Agnes. Those are actually some of my favourite bits because it's it's not really about the impact that you have on society. It's more about the impact that you have on the people that are closest to you. Like, do you remember them? Do you spend time with them? Do you appreciate them? And he reflects on that and I just really found those to be quite insightful to his character. I think it'll make you think about uh, the people in your own life and how you treat them and, and I don't know, I always like that. The other kind of key theme, which I just kind of briefly mentioned, was how different groups, different minorities are treated in this world. We have women, obviously, black people, we have Chinese people as well, we have Indian tribes. So it's really interesting that we have all these different groups of people and they all kind of ended up in this place and it's kind of a bit of a shit show, but it, it works, like he balances that out really well. And I do think on the, the women piece, women do have power in other ways. They're not completely devoid of powers. So I will just mention that, that there are some very interesting female characters who on the surface might not look like they have any power, but in fact, they actually do once you start to peel back the layers. So I really enjoyed that. There wasn't much that I disliked about this book. I think the only thing is, is the book can be very, very slow in places. And that's the only reason why I didn't give it a five stars. That being said, I have been thinking about it a lot recently, so I might end up just bumping it up, but we'll see. I gave it a 4.5. It's almost a perfect Western. I think once I read some more Westerns in the coming months, I'll be able to kind of compare and, and kind of see where it stacks up as well. But I loved it. I think it's kind of got everything that you want in a Western. I think if you are new to Westerns or you're kind of trying to get back into them, I think this is a really good place to start. I'm definitely going to be reading some more Pete Dexter now because I love his writing style as well. But as I mentioned before, there's trigger warnings for pretty much everything. Abuse, swearing, super crude, there's racism, there's homophobia, there's misogyny. It's It ticks every box in every possible way. Bear that in mind. But I think if you like Grimdark and if you like Westerns, then you got to read it. Like it's a classic Western, so definitely pick it up. So that's my review. I really loved it. And I'm going to be picking up some more Westerns in the coming months. Let me know if you've read it. I don't really know anybody who's read it. I think there's a couple of people who might be picking it up in the coming months. But if you've read it, ping me down below and let's chat about it. As always, folks, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, take care, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.